This video is designed to familiarize you with the Roots Trust toolbar located near the top of the Roots Trust window. The first seven toolbar buttons, starting from the left, deal with navigation. Navigation normally uh, refers to travel from place to place. Uh, here it means traveling from person to person, if you're looking at the person view, or family to family in the case of the family view. The button with the white arrow uh, in, in the green disk is a standard back button, which will transport, transport you back to the person or family you were viewing prior to navigating to the one you are presently viewing. So if we click this button here, which will take us to the end of the database, and hit the back button, we return to the place we were. Clicking the button with the root in it, actually it's a carrot, which is a root, will transfer you to the root person or family. We're looking at the person view now, so this is the root person, which happens to be me. If I hit the back button, we return to where we were. The next four buttons are used to traverse the database sequentially, person by person, or family by family. The first of the four will take you to the first person or family in the database. The next one, if enabled, will take you to the previous person or family. Well, since we're already at the beginning of the database, there is no previous, so the, that button is, in it, is disabled. If we hit the, this button here, which will take us to the, the next uh, person in the database, number two, then the, this button becomes enabled again. Of course, now we're at the beginning again, so it's disabled. If we click this button here, we're transported to the end of the database. This is the last person in the database. Okay, let's go back where we started from. If you click the next button, the one with the ship's wheel as its icon, a combo box and a text box are inserted between the wheel and the following button. Select an attribute from the combo box, enter a value into the text field, and press the Enter key. And if the value that you had entered into the text box is valid, you will be transported to the desired person, event, or family. Let's look at the attributes you can choose from. First, we have Person ID, which is the unique numeric ad identifier for each person record in the database. So this individual here, we can look at his Person ID by mousing over this Hidden Fields tag, and there you see it is 36. The next attribute is Event ID. If we display one of his life's events and, and mouse over the hidden fields uh, tag, you see that the event ID for this event is 750. If we go over to the family view and mouse over the hidden fields tag, you see that this family is number 38. So let's go back where we were, we started from. Let's look at, at some of the other ideas. Uh, attributes in here. For instance, social security number, standard U.S. social security number. This here national ID number is uh, sort of like a, a foreign equivalent to the U.S. social security number. And uh, the these three values, the ancestral file number, the permanent record file number, and the automated record number are GEDCOM values that uh, roots trust normally does not expose, but will import if they are present in a GEDCOM file. So using this device here, you have a way of accessing those records by those values, uh, should you know them. 
The last three entries in the combo box begin with UI colon, since they identify user indices that I created. There is a separate video on creating and using user indices. Let's take a look at this one here, the, the Tilton user index. Let's look at what, what it looks like over here in the person index. There's the Tilton user index, which I created from information in a source work called the Tilton family in America. And many members of that uh, family over a period of number of generations are identified in that work. And many of those individuals are assigned a unique code. Well, I created this index uh, to link uh, my database entries with the members of that family in the book. So that when I'm dealing with this particular Thomas uh, uh, Tilton in my database, I can uh, make sure that it's, it's the same one in the book by, by using the, in, the user reference, the user uh, reference ID. So let's go back here, and uh, if I were to select uh, person ID, which is already pre-selected, and then enter 20 into the text field, which is the person ID of my uh, great-grandfather, Alfred William Duncan Brook, and uh, press the Enter key, and there he is. So let's toggle the navigation gadget closed and move on uh, to the next button, the one with the three foreign text characters on it. It toggles uh, the extended keyboard on and off. The extended keyboard has 30 pre-programmed panes of foreign and special characters arranged by language. You can enter text from the extended keyboard into any text field in Roots Trust. If you're curious about this tool, there's a separate video that discusses it, discusses it in detail. I'll quickly demo uh, how you enter characters from the extended uh, keyboard. Uh, please bear with me. I'm making this video in window mode, so the the extended keyboard disappears when I click on a field to, to gain focus, but I can click it back and type in, uh, press, uh, click one of these things, and you can see that that character appears in, in my text, as does this one and this one and so forth. That's how it works. Let's get rid of these characters. The button with the three overlapping uh, busts is used to invoke the relationship calculator. Uh, I, let's try it out. I, I want to calculate the relationship between me and a certain Anders Persson, the oldest, oldest of my patrilineal ancestors that I have identified to date. First, I navigate to myself by clicking on the carrot root button. Next, I click on the toolbar button for the relationship calculator to display the appropriate form. Since the current person, me, is already identified as person one, I click the, the lower select button to identify person two. If I wanted to select someone else other than the current person, or me, as person one, I could have clicked on the upper select button to do that. So here we are. I have, uh, I use, um, the next form gives me a choice of several ways of making my selection. Uh, you'll recognize this combo box here. You'll recognize these from, from the navigation gadget above. We have uh, the same uh, attributes in here, except there is no family ID or event ID in the list because this particular uh, um, form is only used for selecting persons. So I don't have a value in, for any of these attributes for this particular individual. Uh, so I'm going to have to select him from a list. So I click 
on this radio button and the list is displayed and I type in, start to type in his last name and there he is. Notice the star to the left of his name. That does not mean that he was a brigadier general. It means that he was an ancestor of the root person and the root person is none other than me. Uh, so he was my ancestor. So I click on the OK. Uh, I see that the selected person has been displayed in this uh, in, the tech, in the selected person text box. I'm happy with that selection. If not, I could have gone back and made a different selection. So now I click OK and you see that uh, I, Living Nelson, is the great, 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 great grandson of Anders Persson. So. The icon of the next button is a shrunken roots trust uh, screen image with three black arrows superimposed over it. Use this button to toggle the person index or family index on or off. In other words, make it disappear or come back. This button has no effect on the other views. So there you see the, the person index has disappeared and now it has reappeared. If we go to the family view, the family view doesn't have room for an integral uh, index table. So when you toggle one on, it appears as a separate window. And we can toggle it back off. Let's go back to the person view. The next three toolbar buttons are used to call operating system supplied apps for a calculator, an app for inputting characters, oh, excuse me, calculator, app for inputting characters uh, that are not on the keyboard, and a text editor. The names of these apps uh, and their respective icons are operating system dependent. Since I'm running under Windows right now, the apps are Calculator, Character Map, and Notepad. If I were using Linux instead of Windows, the apps would be Calculator, Character Map, and Text Edit. If this were Mac OS, the apps would be Calculator, Character Palette, and Text Edit. However, starting with version 10.9 of Mac OS, also known as Mavericks, the character palette is no longer available as a separate callable app since it's been integrated into the operating system. To enable this feature, click on the Apple symbol located on the left of the global menu bar, then select System Preferences, then Keyboard. I realize this is difficult since we don't have uh, a Mac OS uh, screen uh, visible. But, and then you select the, the checkbox labeled Show Keyboard and Character Viewers in Menu Bar and close the dialog. A small rectangular art icon with an asterisk in it will now appear on the global menu bar just to the left of the volume control. When you want to enter a foreign or a special character into a text field in Roots Trust or any other program, simply click this new icon and, and select Show Keyboard Viewer from the short menu that is displayed, and the Characters app will be displayed. You can then select a character and double-click it, and it will uh, be inserted into the text field of your app that is in focus. So, if you're running Mac OS version 10.9 or above, the Character Palette button will not be present on the Roots Trust toolbar, and the corresponding entry will be absent from the menu bar. Since Roots Trust has an extended keyboard gadget, you would probably only need the Character app to input a character that is not on any of the extended keyboard language panels or uh, to create a new language panel. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the video on the extended keyboard. The strange looking button with the four arrows pointing up, down, left, and right is used to return the window to the size and shape it was when you invoked Roots Trust. 
If you have drastically modified the window's appearance, you might need to click the button two or three times to get the window back to its original configuration. Let's mess up the window here, move all kinds of stuff around. So if we click on that button, see it there. There we go. So we're back to where we were. Except that I'm not in there. there we go. The next four buttons, and you might not see all four uh, for any given person, are used for establishing default directories for documents, multimedia files, combined files, that is, a, uh, or combined directories, uh, mixed documents and, and multimedia files in the same directory, and finally, heraldry image files. Once you have established a default directory for one of these categories, the corresponding button will no longer be shown for that person. And when you want to link a, a file to a file uh, of that category uh, to the person or uh, one of his or her events, Roots Trust opens up the file selection form right to the person's default directory so you don't have to drill down through scores of directories and subdirectories. Let me go back to where we were here, and you see we only have a button for heraldry for this individual. Uh, let's go to birth. Oh, uh, let's say we want to, no, we'll go to a birth and we want to add a document. So we click on this toolbar button, and you can see that it opens up to his default directory. So we don't have to drill down through all of this stuff to, uh, to get to his default directory. Similarly, if we wanted to add a photo, we click the, the, the button to add a multimedia file and it takes us directly to his default directory for multimedia files. The last toolbar button is used to invoke context-sensitive help. This button uh, will be inactive if a modal dialog box is open. So if I open, nothing happens if I try to uh, except that the, the screen flashes. However, uh, many of Roots Trust's modal dialog boxes have their own help button. So, here we see that uh, we've been given context uh, uh, context sensitive help for the primary primary events tab since that is what is uh, is currently in view and in focus that concludes the video introduction to roots trusts toolbar please uh, be sure to watch the videos devoted to the seven uh, roots trust views